like an enderman. <laughs> Hello there guys, how's it going? Of course my name is Matt and today I'm going to be here teaching you guys how to use Swing in software development and with Java. Um, basically today we're going to be creating a simple application to be able to... Um, what's the word? Um, a little bit of a, so basically we're going to be using Swing to create a simple applica applica <laughs> really can't get my words out. application um, just with a button on it and just kind of render a box with it on. But a couple of things first to be able to do this. You, first, you're going to be using. I'm going to be using Eclipse. I will teach you how to import the libraries and stuff using Eclipse. But I don't know how to do it in things like p other people might be using IntelliJ or something else. I don't use that. I, I always use Eclipse. I just find it a lot easier. If you for this tutorial set, I'm going to be using Eclipse. But if you do know how to import libraries using IntelliJ or something else, then feel free. But if you've never done Java development before, I'd basically, you know, um, what's the word? Recommend using Eclipse because it's everything. It's, I've always used that. I use it for everything, and it's just so much better. Anyways, let's just get started. So in the download link, you'll find this thing here: the JUnit 3.8.1 SRC. My brother is just moving around on the background, being a dick. So this basically here is allowing us to use the swing, all the swing crap, basically. Or well, in here, if you oh god, no, when right, go away. Uh -huh. Um, in here, the JUnit, saying it'll give you the swing UI and everything that you pretty much need. Um, so first, what we're going to do is, we're going to go to our Java, Java, blah, 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 Java and we're going to go File, New, Java Project. If you cannot find Java Project and you've just installed it, go to File, New, uh, File, New, Other. And then Java Project will be right there. Call the project name JUnit. Alright. Then down here, see the system library? Right click the source file and go import. Uh, then go general and then archive file. From the archive file, uh, oh crap, that's that was my software development. I've created a new one just for this thing. Uh, oh god damn it. Um, where is it? Where's it? S? Software workplace. Um, now what we want to do is just click on JUnit, okay? Literally, just JUnit. Oh shit, my bad. Right, into the folder, JUnit. No, in, into the source file, okay? It, sh it'll, it should ask for it and it should be into the source file. Now browse, find the JUnit source thing that I've given, been given to you in a zip file and open it. And then go down, untick this. You don't want the HTML. And down here, it makes sure all this is ticked. Oh god. Then hit finish. Right, now if you go, there we go. Right, now you've done that, we can now use the swing UI. This basically, just keep this in your package explorer. Um, that's it. Now we're going to actually start creating the new file, so new job project, and we're going to call this my first app. My first app. Okay. And down here, go to the, this here is the source file. This is where you're going to keep all your packages and your class files and everything else. But inside the source file, we can't access the actual code unless we create a package. So package, package can usually, is usually a website with your, like, backwards. For example, mine would be com.comul.matic.grant. And then my first app. But we're not going to do that because you probably don't have a website. We're just going to call this me dot your name. So my name's Matt. No capitals. Keep capitals out. Makes it easier. And then my my first app. Okay. Then create a new class file. Class files are what we use in Java to actually you know create things. And we're going to call this app. Now, if you are if you have done Java before and you're asking me why I haven't called it main, it's because I don't, this doesn't request, it does request the main class, but you've got to create a method for the main and then it gets all mixed up and it's just, Ew. so at the moment we're public class app, we want to go public class app extends jframe, import jframe, okay, well that's step one, 
you have now officially told the class file that the class app extends JFrame. So what's going to happen now is you want to go, this is basically setting up the main class for it to, okay, sorry, I had some interruption there, so I just cut that bit out. Um, so yeah, basically now what we're going to do is we're going to create a main method to access, to make sure the the compiler can access them all these class files. So we're going to do public static, oh god, static void, oh my gosh, public static void main, and then open that, that up. Make sure main, this has to be in lower, char lower case, otherwise it won't work. And then string, uh, string, uh, string it as in a, an array list and args. And that, that sh now should return no errors. Check now for the public static void main and then string. This here is an array list. Uh, these two little brackets here, they mean an array list. Array list is a list of items of the same data type, for example, integers. But w and we've called the list a string. So what's going to happen now is we're going to go new app. Right. Now what's that? What that? Now what's that's done is when it on the boot up, it wants to access app. We have not created an app yet. So what we're going what we're going to do now is we're going to create public app. Open it up with no parameters, and that's it. Now that should be fine. What's the error of that? There we go. Right. Okay. So now we have this. We're now going to name the window. So go super and call it my. Oh god, my first. Okay. No, god damn it. First app. Right. Basically, what's happened? The super is a fight. <coughs> super is basically just declaring that this little thing here. Right. The super is going to be my first app. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go set size, and then we're going to go 400 by 300, and then set resizable, and then true. Basically, now what's happening is the size is 400 by 300 pixels. The re it can be resized, so like like this, for example, it can be resized like that. But now what you need to do, you need to make sure it's set visible. Set visible true. So all these current things are true. Um, and then what you need to do is set default close op uh, operation. Um, close underscore on underscore exit. Exit on close. Close. There we go. Basically, um, this will stop any errors happening when you decide to close your application while it's already compiling. Um, if I didn't add that, you see me having a load of problems in the future when I'm trying to do all this crap. Okay, congratulations. You have now created your first app, pretty much. If I, you now go and hit this little run button and save it and as a Java application. You'll have this here, and it's my first app. It's been imprinted there, so I'm just going to go like that. There we go. My first app. You have now successfully run your first app. Congratulations. However, we don't. We want to add a button and a frame to the button. So what we're going to do is now is we're going to close this up, and up here we're going to create some new variables, defining a new button. Right. Within the button, what's going to happen is, if I just draw this out, imagine this is this thing here, right, dush, right, that there, and then that, and then, like, it's like that, and then that. Right, that th this thing here that I'm showing you, just imagine it's got things down as a button, and a frame within it makes it just look a little bit better. It's just got a little frame in between it. So what we're going to go now is we're going to go... Uh, J frame, no, why J panel, uh, P equals new, uh, J panel, and then that. Oh god, J panel for duh. Right, then import J panel from Java X dot swing. 
All right, you've now created the new J panel. What you want to do now is you want to create a J button. B, E, new J button. But what you can do is you can name what is on this button. So what you can go, for example, um, let's go this button does nothing. And because it's just an automatically sizing button, we do not need to size it yet. So now what's happened, you have now created the shortcut and the ability to create a new button. But the problem is this application doesn't know that it's added it. So before, always before the set visible, because it, it runs the commands via um, the way they're put down. So if you put it after that, won't it won't show up. So what you want to go is just here. You want to go... Um, add p oh no sorry p dot add and then b and then add p add the panel right so now when you run it and you save it doosh you now have a button and the button does nothing you see this panel and the button see what i mean congratulations you have created your first java application using swing um, I will carry on with these with action listeners next um, for like, thinking what's going to happen, what, uh, for something to happen when you click that button. All right, guys, thank you for watching. And of course, if you like the video, hit that like button. Um, helps me. Um, also, tell me what you want to see next if I haven't already put the video up. And anyways, guys, have a nice day, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.